Hey guys, welcome back. Week 18, hanging in there, good job. We are continuing on in earth science. This week we're doing two experiments that have to do with air. So first of all, what can you tell me about air? Um, what is air made out of? Uh, can you smell air? Can you feel air? Can you see air? Um, today we're going to do a couple experiments to learn a little bit more about how God has created the air around us, the air that helps us breathe and live and survive. So the first one, well, just to rewind, our verse, Psalms 24, 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and all the fullness thereof. So everything in the earth, including air, belongs to him, comes from him, and has purpose in how it moves, how it works, um, was all created with an intelligent design um, to make the weather and everything. So even air um, in its complex form and in its simple form gives glory to the creator. Um, so, okay, so number 140, push up is the first one we're doing. So for this, We'll need a clear container helps, but you could use um, a solid container. But we're gonna do a clear container um, in a little clear cup, or I have my little handy dandy dollar store things that I use all the time. So we're gonna be using this. Um, and again, first our purpose is to learn about what is atmospheric pressure. So you can ask the kids that, see if any of them have any ideas. Talk again about air. Um, well, do you think that air weighs anything? Um, do you think um, the air moves? How do we know? That is what we're going to test today. So that is our purpose. Our, um, so you can get some hypotheses on that. Does air weigh anything? And can we experience it with our senses? Um, and then our materials, again, our clear container, you're going to fill it pretty full with water and then another clear cup or a um, little container like this. For our experiment, you simply fill it up, um, have a mama fill it up for you with water while you're talking uh, about air. And then you're just gonna put this in here. You basically just want enough water that will cover your whole cup, it will cover the whole opening of your cup or container. You put it in there, keeping the opening in the water. You're gonna turn it down Okay, and say, okay, what's everybody observe here? Um, what did you notice is happening to um, our container, to our cup? Well, there's water inside of it. That's right. So what do you think is going to happen when I pull up on my container or cup and see what they think is going to happen? When I pull up, still keeping the opening in the water, you see two things happen. Number one, hopefully you can see that. Number one, you can see the water has filled my container. And number two, the water in the big container has went down. So let's look at that again. So we have our cup in here, we turn it, we know it's full of water and we know it's trapped because that's on there, but what's gonna happen when I lift it up? So the water stays in my cup and the water out here goes down. Um, you could, um, a clear container is pretty easy to see for the kids, and um, but if not, you could put a piece of tape or a little dot with a marker just so you can watch and see that water level change. So it's kind of like magic happening here um, that the water goes down. So why do you think that happened? Um, and you could have each of the kids very gently come around and do this, pull up on it, and watch the water level. I think that's what's cool is that it goes down. Water sucked up into our vacuum here. Why is that happening? What do you think's going on? I'll give you a hint. It has to do with the air and see if they have any guesses or hypotheses. So what's happening here is the air that's all around us is made up of molecules, a whole bunch of little air molecules all around us. What do we know holds everything to the earth. Gravity, the force of gravity, pulls everything down and keeps us from shooting off into space. 
gravity also works on air molecules. So gravity is pulling air molecules down at all times. And so when we are close to sea level, the air molecules down low to the ground are packed, if you can almost imagine, they're packed on top of each other. And it gets kind of heavy with all these air molecules. Now, if you were to climb a mountain and go up high above sea level, the air, because you're not um, directly to the, um, on the, you're on the earth, but you're not down low on sea level, the air molecules begin to space out. The air is lighter, it's not as heavy. And for us who are used to living close to sea level, it's harder to breathe. Our lungs are not used to not having enough air molecules. We're used to this dense, air molecule environment. So down low where we are, imagine there's a whole bunch of air molecules packed on top of each other. Well, those air molecules packed on top of each other create a pressure. And that's what atmospheric pressure is. It's all those air molecules packed on top of each other being pulled down by gravity. So when we have our cup here, we turn it down. As we pull up, we resist gravity, the air pressure, the atmospheric pressure, the air molecules are pushing down on the water because it is all around us creating a certain level of pressure or force. And in this particular experiment, it's pushing down on the water while we're pulling up, creating this vacuum in this little cup here. Now, when we pull it all the way up, then the air gets, um, the vacuum is broken, air gets in there and the gravity wins and pulls the water back down. Um, but while we're creating that vacuum, the air is trapped on the outside. And so it has to do its force where it can. So atmospheric pressure is pushing down on the water. We're pulling up against gravity, um, creating this vacuum in this cup. And that is why you see a change in the level of the water because there's air molecules all around us. Even though we can't see them, there is a pressure that's working. There's something you often hear in weather terms or hear people talk about the barometric pressure. They say it'll change up their vision, cause headaches and all of that. Barometric pressure barometer is what measures the pressure or weight of those air molecules. And so as the weather changes, that atmospheric pressure can also change the density of those air molecules around us creating that. And so that's what we're seeing here is the air molecules do have weight. They can create pressure or force, even though we can't even see it. Much like there's forces happening even in the spiritual realm between the Lord fighting for us, we can't see it but it is real and happening um, all around us, just like atmospheric pressure. Now we've learned a little bit about air. We know what's air made out of? It's made out of molecules um, all around us, a whole bunch of air molecules. We learned that there's a pressure created as gravity pulls on air molecules. And around us at sea level, it's heavier and denser. Up high and high altitudes, it's lighter. Um, and not as compact. And so there's not as many air molecules up there. That's why it makes it hard to breathe. So looking at the properties of air, how do you think, now that we know there's air molecules floating all around us, how do you think temperature affects air molecules? Has anyone ever felt, seen, heard wind? What is wind? What is it made out of? Well, wind, as you can assume, is the movement of air molecules. Well, what causes wind? There's a couple things that can cause wind, but the one we're gonna look at today is temperature and how temperature can create a wind or air movement. So in this experiment, a couple tree, tricky things. You need to, it calls for a desk lamp, which I just happen to own one still. Um, but you need a real light bulb. So this means not LED, it means good old fashioned light bulb, which we happen to have one in my house. 
Um, and so it worked okay. Um, the stronger watts, this is only a 40 watt, but the stronger watts, obviously we're gonna put out a little more heat and that's what we're looking for. Um, I have a couple tutors who have chickens and they have those heat lamps for the baby chickens. Those are gonna be awesome. So they're gonna bring those. So you need a light, a lamp that creates heat. LED does not, which is great for safety and energy, but is not great for this experiment. So <laughs> you need a light that creates heat, number one. Um, you also need, um, so I've had mine plugged in here, so it's creating a little, it's warmed up and creating a little warmth. You also need a piece of tissue paper, scissors, and a piece of string, and a tiny piece of tape that you're gonna put to the tissue paper. So you're gonna cut your tissue paper into a spiral, okay? Um, some of you may be very proficient in this skill. I am not. So um, I had to try a couple turns to actually make it kind of look like a spiral, but be encouraged if yours does not turn out beautiful because it still can work. So you can start on the edge of your tissue paper and just cut. The um, Van Cleave says to make it about two inches wide. Um, so you can just cut in a spiral shape or you can start in the center and draw with a pencil first. I did it both ways and they both turned out kind of equally not as beautiful. So, but you can start, it does give you a guide if you take a pencil and draw a spiral and then cut it out. It does give you at least more of a guide um, to what you're going for. So your end result is a spiral of tissue paper, similar to this. And you're going to um, put six inches of yarn and you want a tiny piece of tape because I did find if you have a big piece of tape or if you tape too much of the thread down, it kind of blocks the movement of the thing. So um, six inches, tiny piece of tape, tape it right in the center of the top of your spiral. That's what we're going for here, okay? And then you say, this is, again, we're looking at this temperature effect air movement. Um, and so what is the hypothesis? Do you think it will or it won't and why? And so what we're gonna do is we're going to look at heat, how heat and cool can cause um, movement of air molecules. So see what their hypotheses are and then see if we can get this to go. All right, so we're going to, sorry, my kiddos interrupting over there. So, okay. So we're going to, all right, yay, you can kind of see what's happening here. So you put it above the heat lamp, a couple inches, and see what happens. Now this is spiraling beautiful for you. That is so awesome that that's working well. So you can see um, kind of what's happening here. So why is my tissue moving? Why is this tissue paper moving in a spiral form? Uh, what are your guesses? What's happening here? What's going on um, in our thing? So again, if this was LED, I tried with a couple ones, even big lights, and they did not work. Uh, but this little 40 watt bulb is working beautifully. You can see my spiral is not a perfect spiral, but it's still doing the job. So, um, so yay, that's good. All right, so you kind of see what happens. So what's going on with this experiment? Um, so heat does affect air movement, as we could see by our little spiral stirring there. Um, as heat rises, it creates, heat creates energy. The energy, if you can imagine, creates or makes the little air molecules hyper or moving. So they move around, they stretch out, um, and as the heat molecules move around and um, go up, then, so the heat molecules go up, cool air then can come in, and it can create this convection movement, this convection um, breeze or wind. And so again, heat from the lamp or heat from the sun creates energy. The energy makes the air molecules kind of bounce around, rise. And as that's happening, as the heat goes up, cool air can come in 
and create this convection wind or breeze is what's happening. And that's what caused our little spiral to turn. So you can see this, um, if you're at the ocean, it's hot, the land is hot, the heat's going up and then you get oh, this nice ocean breeze. It takes longer for the huge ocean to warm up than it does the beach we're sitting on. And so the heat goes up, cool breeze comes in and you can feel it. Um, wind in its you know, harshest forms can cause tornadoes, um, this heat rising, cool air coming in, this convection process creates all kinds of weather patterns um, and is pretty cool that we can demonstrate. Number one, what is air made out of? Molecules. Um, number two, what is atmospheric pressure? Air has weight because of the pull of the, the gravity on the molecules. And then we see that temperature does affect air movement. Heat causes the air molecules to rise, allows cool air to come in, and creates wind or convection. So have fun learning about air.